Hi, and welcome to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast presented by Wolf Precision Incorporated, where we learn about and share long range shooting and custom rifle building. I am your host, Jamie Dotson, and welcome to the show. Hi, and welcome to Wolf Precision's Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Dotson, and welcome to the show. In this episode, we are going to continue on to part two of laying the foundation or the four pillars for great marksmanship. And in this one, we're going to be talking about preparing to take the shot. So we're fundamentals is the key, and each pillar is connected and has a layer of importance that has to be passed on to the next. And so we can continue on to shoot great if as we go through this process of verifying the four pillars or, or laying a great foundation that each one is done correctly. And so we're going to move on to part two now, and we're going to be talking about fundamentals and preparing to take the shot. So without further ado, here we go. All right, before we get started, I do want to say a quick thanks to Krieger Barrels. Krieger is a proud sponsor of the show here. They make fine cut rifled barrels. We have been using them for many, many years, decades now. Uh, Great friends as far as we've known each other that long. We've been to shows together. Uh, They've helped us run booze actually at shows with us and have flown in to spend time with us and our customers. Uh, They make some of the finest barrels in the country and of course made here in the USA. You can stop over to KriegerDirect.com where they have barrels readily in inventory or you can custom order a barrel that will suit your needs. So if you stop over to KriegerBarrels.com or KriegerDirect.com, you can get a fine cut rifled barrel in as little as two to three days. All right, we also want to announce that we have something really cool that happened last week. We had a private donor donate a slot to the shooting school that is going to be given away in about 10 days. And so if you thought about coming out and attending our long range shooting school and you are a veteran, this is a great opportunity. So we had a customer reach out to us and wants to remain anonymous, but he has paid for and donated a slot for our upcoming class, October 14, 15, and 16, in which if you're a veteran and you would like to attend the Long Range Shooting School. All you need to do is apply for the competition, and he is going to cover the cost for you to come and attend the school, which we think is absolutely awesome. So we're held here in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Uh, You'll have to provide some lodging here locally, which we can hook you up with that. Uh, We have a couple really nice places to give big discounts for students coming in for the school. But how cool is that that an anonymous donor had donated the money to allow a veteran to come through the school? So how do you register and to get put in for the drawing? So if you stop over to our Facebook page, it's a Wolf Precision, and you like us, follow us, and you tag three people, you are in the running. And we are going to have the drawing go off at the end of the month, and we will notify the winner there on Facebook as well as email and so on and so forth. So Really looking forward to giving the slot away. Again, stop over to our Facebook page. Like us, follow us, tag three people. You are in, and then you will be assigned a number, and those numbers will be randomly picked by computer. So looking forward to uh, giving that slot away and for having a veteran come through the school. I think that's really awesome. All right, so we were talking about the four pillars of marksmanship and laying a great foundation. And we, in the previous podcast where we've, we've talked about the subject in part one, we talked about the setup. And then this one, we're going to talk about preparing to take the shot. Now, I want to be real clear with what we're talking about here when we're saying about preparing to take the shot. We're talking about the fundamentals in your interaction and getting ready to shoot the rifle. In other words, you know, we've got all these different areas that we're contacting it, preparing to take the shot. And of course, then We talk about firing the perfect shot, which is going to be our third pillar. And then our fourth pillar is going to be focusing on follow through. Now, when we talk about preparing for the shot, there's three things that get involved that that are total that you have to prepare for, but only one that applies for fundamentals of marksmanship. So when we're talking about the second pillar, we're talking about preparing to take the shot fundamentals wise. 
But when you're also preparing to take the shot on a totally different subject and maybe even future podcasts where we're going to be talking about, you've got the mechanical aspect of it, you know, dialing your dope and making corrections. And then you've got your environmental aspect of it that you have to take into consideration, which would be your density altitude, barometric pressure, wind, and all that great stuff. But that's other things. So when you get into long range shooting, you've got your fundamentals, you've got your mechanical, you've got your environmental. This four pillars is focused on fundamentals. So yes, you still have to uh, work with the mechanical parts of it and doing all of the doping. And then you still have to go through and work with all the environmental, but this is fundamentals. So the core of preparing to take the shot and then firing the perfect shot. And we always say that bad preparation leads to a bad shot. It's just bottom line is most of the time what happens when shooters get involved in this is they get so hyper-focused on the target or what's in front of their eyes that they sort of go brain dead from the neck down. Um, I always say that a shooter's head forgets it's got a butt attached to it. And when you get really hyper-focused on the target, whether it's in a match or at a big game animal, your heart's pounding through your chest, you're excited. And if it's not, you probably should find a different hobby because mine is. But you've got to remind yourself that there's this bubble that you're in as a shooter and nothing good is going to happen in front of the muzzle unless you get everything right behind it first. The only thing you're seeing downrange is whether you got it right or wrong. You're seeing the results of your fundamentals, not really, you know, there's no guesswork to this. What you're seeing is a direct result of the preparation before you shot. And that's just the bottom line. So. We have to touch the rifle when we shoot. We're not bench rest. Um, those guys do free recoil techniques where they're only touching the trigger and let the rifle recoil freely. Unfortunately, we have to be all over the rifle. I mean, we have to control it. We have to handle it. We have to point it. A lot of times in these different areas that we touch them, we have to be really careful with the rifle, especially in long-range shooting or what I consider precision shooting at distance, right? Right is that we do it the same every single time. Because what has to happen here is the rifle has to predictably act the same way for each and every shot. That way it predictably hits the same spot, hopefully, over and over and over again. And so the key to this part when we're talking about preparing to take the shot fundamentally is to make sure that all the places that we're touching and that we're gripping, that we're doing the same thing every single time. The rifle does not like to be pushed or pulled or held differently for each and every shot. It's going to behave differently. And when it does that, that means it's possibly going to shoot at completely different points of impact, sometimes much greater than what you might think. Now, I could talk about this subject for at least six to eight hours. At the shooting school, we probably spend, you know, hours upon hours upon hours, you know, going over these in great, great detail. This is a podcast, and so I try to keep the podcast right about 30 minutes, so I'm going to try to be very short and to the point with this and not just rattle on needlessly. So we'll talk about these subjects maybe more advanced individually in later episodes where we might break them down even further, but let's just get to the point. Preparing to take the shot, there's a couple key things you have to do for the second pillar, and the first thing is you have to make sure that you have and are using a natural point of aim. The next thing you need to control is a firm handshake grip. The next thing after that is pulling the rifle gently into the shoulder or loading the bipod. You pick, but either way, the rifle has got to be into your shoulder, right? Then we've got cheek weld. Then we've got cheek pressure. Then we've got natural respiratory pause. When you get to that natural respiratory pause, at that point, you're actually getting ready to fire the perfect shot, getting into our third pillar. So let's go back over this list again, preparing to take the shot. Now, we talked about setup previously, so this isn't about setup and how we use the bags and bipods and all that stuff. This is about you getting on the gun and getting ready to shoot. So the first thing we're going to have to work on is finding and controlling our natural point of aim. Firm handshake grip, loading the bipod or pulling the rifle gently into the shoulder, but we have to have a set amount of pressure on the butt pad, cheek weld, and cheek pressure. So we're touching the stock with our face. We have to control how much pressure we're putting on it. And then our natural respiratory pause. So how do you check your natural point of aim? And what is it? Well, in a very nutshell type explanation, natural point of aim means that you're not pushing or pulling the rifle, in my mind, to get on target. You're not, you're not loading it up with pressure 
we're sort of steering it to the target. In other words, the rifle is naturally pointed at the target. You're not pushing or pulling. Like if you go back and listen to our previous podcast where we talk about driving the rifle and how I think the steering wheel is in the buttstock, we're not driving it to the target. We're, we're letting the rifle naturally find that, that target and be pointed at it. And two ways you can check to make sure that you have a natural point of aim, that you're not pushing or pulling artificially to get the crosshairs on it, would be just to relax, go through your entire mental checklist, or go through this entire series. But rather than pulling the trigger, when we get to pulling the trigger, just relax your, your left hand that's holding your rear bag, relax your grip, just, just relax a little bit. And what will happen is the rifle should rise stri- straight above the target. Um, crosshairs should not wobble left and right. They should not move left or right. They should rise straight above. That's letting you know that you're not pushing or pulling the rifle because when the rifle recoils, if you are, you're going to influence that shot ever so slightly. So natural point of aim. Another way to verify that you have a really good natural point of aim is to dry fire. And this is one of those unsung heroes that if you really want to get good at shooting, you probably want to f- spend a fair amount of time dry firing as much as you can. I mean, A, it's it's cheap. You're not wasting any ammo. But it really allows you to work with that rifle fundamentally. Um, you'll, you'll see if you're pushing or pulling on a rifle, the crosshairs will actually jump. So just the vibrations of the firing pin falling and shaking the rifle. Uh, picture like your ground under your feet moving. Um, just allows any excess pressures or things like that into the rifle to come out, to move. And so it's no longer being stuck to the ground. You're sort of shaking it. Right, So natural point of aim, the best way to make sure that you're not manipulating the rifle to the target, artificially pushing or pulling it and trying to hold it there, is by going through your entire mental checklist and relaxing or going through your entire mental checklist and dry firing. Those two ways will give you a good indication of whether or not you've got a good natural point of aim. And the further the distance, the more important this becomes. And I always remind guys in hunting scenarios, there's a difference between the perfect shot and harvesting an animal. Sometimes you're going to sacrifice the quality of the shot because – Time is of the essence or you have to get the shot down quickly. And so an elk walking off at 200 yards out of a tree line or into a tree line is the wrong place to be going through and checking your natural point of aim over and over and over again. You're probably not going to miss that elk at 200 yards. So don't forego what your objective is, in that case harvesting an animal, to microscopically analyze the perfect shot and let the animal get away. So I just want to be clear on that here too. The further the distance, the more these things become really, really important, uh, especially as the targets get smaller or more critical that you have a good shot on it. The next thing is firm handshake grip. Again, we talked about this when we're saying about driving the rifles. I like to have a firm handshake grip on the rifle for every position that I shoot the rifle from. And probably the main reason is because then I only have to have to worry about one grip. You know, I don't like to use a loose grip this and a uh, you know shooting free recoil and then all of a sudden in a barricade situation I've got to use a firm handshake grip I like to have a level of consistency on how I'm handling the rifle here so firm handshake grip this is me and and I picture a firm handshake grip like driving a car intently you know like not not just lazily hanging onto the steering wheel with two wheel two fingers but just driving it right and also not like um, the grip that you're going to put on that steering wheel right before an accident you know where you panic and you grab the wheel and you're really jerking around so Firm handshake grip. The one unsung hero here is your pinky finger. I always remind guys and girls, if you're shooting, make sure you loosen your pinky finger up ever so slightly on your firing hand. If you grip with the same amount of pressure with your pinky as you do with the rest of your fingers, in my mind, it creates a leverage uh, issue with with being able to twist or, or, or torque the rifle under recoil. And so because your pinky is the furthest down the stock from the barrel, it creates a, a, a leverage issue where, you know, if you picture you keep keep making that pinky go down further, make a stock that's three feet long. You know, at the very bottom, the, the more away from the center of the barrel you are, uh, lower-wise, the easier it is for you to manipulate it and twist things left and right. So the, the further away from the barrel we get, the longer that, that distance is. It's, it's a leverage. It's a lever. And so you, you're able to twist and torque the rifle easier with less pressure. And so I actually don't take my pinky off the stock. I don't stick it out there. But I actually grip um, with my other fingers, and I just loosen my pinky finger up ever so slightly because of that issue. So firm handshake grip, but loosen your pinky finger up just a little bit. The next thing we want to make sure, and this is a critical one as well, is make sure that you have a consistent amount of pressure against the recoil pad of the rifle. Whether you push or pull, I don't care. 
So if I have the choice and I'm prone, I'm going to load the bipod up first, and there's proper techniques to do that. And you can probably Google all these different ways people load the bipod up. But the one thing I'm going to tell you if you load the bipod is whether you push with your feet or pull the rifle back into your shoulder more than you're supposed to, then settle in. But your shoulder should be square, and you don't want to use your shoulder itself to push. So I don't – if you can picture like raising your shoulder up on the right side um, as you're standing there – you don't want to do that to load pressure on the bipod because you're actually holding that with muscle. We want to, we want the rifle to naturally have some resistance behind it, but we don't want to do it well by jamming our shoulder into it with muscle. We want to either use our body mass and dry, use our feet to push ourselves forward or pull the rifle back more than we're supposed to and then sort of settle into it, gripping it. Or the other way is to simply pull the rifle back into the shoulder. But either way, here's the important part. That rifle has to recoil the same distance Every time you pull the trigger or it has to slide or move to the rear consistently with the same speed and the same distance every single time to have repeatable, fantastic accuracy at long range. So if you picture like a lead sled, people using the zero big heavy recoiling rifles, the rifle doesn't get a chance to do anything other than recoil upwards. It's not sliding to the rear. And keep in mind while all this is happening, the bullet is leaving the barrel. So you can see where... Just putting a rifle on a lead sled and zeroing it even, if you take it out of the lead sled, now you shoot it manually, I'm going to guess that you're not going to hit the same spot, at least not exactly. And more often than not, probably going to be off quite a bit because the rifle can't recoil to the rear like it naturally would. It's being forced against something solid and not giving it all, allowing it to recoil up rather than recoil back. Same thing when you watch people shoot prone. A really good shooter has really great control of the rifle under recoil, and you'll watch the feet. So picture this. Rifles come back with two types of things going on. They come back with speed, so the rifle, when it recoils, it actually has a velocity to the rear, and it comes back with energy, how much energy it's going to put on the shoulder. Those are the two things that the rifle is doing as it's coming back. It's got speed, and it's got energy. You have to control both. And how you want to look at that is like picture your bipod feet moving to the rear. So we watch people here at the shooting school, and if you watch them shoot, and they're really solid on this, you'll see their bipod feet maybe slide an inch, inch and a half, and then they'll push it back forward. Then it slides to the rear, and they push it back forward. But each time they shoot, those bipod feet are sliding that same exact amount to the rear, and it almost looks like the same motion, like nice and controlled, back forward, nice and controlled, back forward, nice and controlled, back forward. Uh, But all of a sudden, out of the blue, they won't get that rifle buried into the shoulder or have that pressure. And we want about two to three pounds of pressure, which isn't a lot, but we want to have that start so the rifle can't lunge into our shoulder. It's just sort of lightly pushing us now. So it's got that that initial resistance that's consistent, two to three pounds of pressure, and then it moves from there. That's the key. But if you watch somebody and they don't get that rifle into the shoulder properly, the feet will lunge. So, I mean, they'll literally like, they'll like hop back like really quick and then you'll see them jam and stop against the shooter and sometimes travel a little bit further. But it's a really fast, you'll see the feet like they, they come back like far and quick and hitting the shoulder and then either sliding some more or falling back forward. That's what you don't want. And so you want to have the same amount of pressure against a rifle when you shoot so it behaves the same as it's coming back with the same speed, but also it moves the same amount as it's coming to the rear every single time. Another thing is cheek weld and cheek pressure, and we've talked about this in fundamentals in previous podcasts, but again, this is fundamentals in preparing to take the shot. We want to have our face on the gun, and we want to have a consistent spot. Think of it as like an anchor point where our face touches the rifle stock each and every time. But we also have to be very careful, just like we do with loading the pressure on the butt stock, that we control the amount of pressure that's on the cheek pad. This is huge for long range. It's, you know, it comes out at close range, but usually people chalk this up to a flyer or just one setting out side of the group or a little. But if you really jam on the rifle with your cheek weld and cheek pressure, you can change your point of impact and you will definitely change how that rifle behaves under recoil because as soon as it recoils, it pictured almost in like zero gravity. You know, all of these areas that you're pushing and pulling on the rifle now get to move. And so you've loaded up all of this sort of 45-degree angle-ish side pressure on the buttstock, and as soon as the gun moves to the rear, it comes out. And so cheek weld and cheek pressure. When you get really excited or you're in a match or in a hunt or something really cool going on that, 
you're getting hyper focused, your heart rate's getting pushed, you've got to stop and think about cheek weld and cheek pressure as you're going through this. And it's quick. You know, you're going from your hand to your shoulder to your face, natural respiratory pause, you're going to shoot. Right. So this isn't like a long, drawn out 20 minute process, but your cheek weld should be in there. You should be thinking about that right before you get your natural respiratory pause. Right. And then the last thing is the natural respiratory pause before we're actually going to get into firing the perfect shot. Here is, you know, it's easy at the range to do. You, you know, you're in a nice rhythm. You're breathe in, breathe out a little bit, hold your breath, what we consider a natural respiratory pause. But when you get excited or you're hoofing up a mountain to make, to get off of a rock to shoot uh, an animal or you've got to sort of hustle down a trail a little bit to get around the corner because the animal moved, you've got your backpack on, you're already tired, you've got weight you know, on you that, that you normally don't carry. And so you'll start to really get an excessive amount of uh, breathing going. I mean, you're sucking for air. So so your your breathing cycles go way up and then you get hyper-focused on the target and you never pause your breath. And boy, that will really cause you heartache at distance when you just, you're breathing through the firing process because as you breathe in and out, your crosshairs do move up and down and that's exactly what's happening to your point of aim. So no matter how much you're sucking for air, and no matter how tired you are, how far you had to hustle to get to the top of this ridge line to take the shot off the other side, you've got to stop your breath for a minute. And if that means you've got to take 30 seconds and, and settle down for a second before you can get there to actually pause your breath for five or 10 seconds, then you have to do that or your shot's going to be affected. This is one thing that's easy to do in practice. But in real world application, because of all the things that we do are usually strenuous and exciting. So we, we have a tendency to fall asleep at this, the wheel on this one. So to go back through it, we're talking about preparing to take the shot. There's a couple things we have to do before we start working about on our third pillar, which is firing the perfect shot. But on this one is preparing it. We've talked about our setup. This is preparing it. You're getting on the rifle and here we go. We need to make sure that we have a good natural point of aim. I've already talked about how we can check it. We've got to have a firm handshake grip. Don't forget about your pinky. We've got to load the bipod or pull the rifle into the shoulder two to three pounds of pressure. And then we've got cheek weld, cheek pressure. And then we've got our natural respiratory pause. If you do this every single time you shoot, it gets faster and faster, and eventually you'll start to recognize things before you even get to them. You'll know they're wrong before you get there. You'll be like, whoop, something's messed up. You're going to fix it, and then you're going to continue on and do it again. It becomes quick. At first, it's not, and you have to make yourself slow down to the point to where you can go through this and make sure things are right before you shoot. So as you're getting yourself worked into a routine, it will get faster over time, really fast actually, but – while you're first getting started, take the time, make a little note checklist. Maybe we'll post our mental checklist up online, but go through it step by step. Every time you shoot and every time you do it, it'll just get a little bit faster, a little bit more ingrained, a little bit more faster, a little more ingrained, a little bit faster, a little bit more grained. And eventually it's going to turn into a habit. It's going to turn into something that, that you're just naturally going to look for and do. And that's the place where you want to be. So our next podcast is going to be part three of the four pillars in which we're going to talk about firing the perfect shot. And this one is just as important as every other pillar that we're talking about. So I'm excited about this one because it's often overlooked, um, really not paid much attention to. It's just simply pulling a trigger and that could not be further from the truth. So we'll talk about that in the next one. I do want to say a quick thanks to two of our sponsors. I do want to say thank you to Trigger Tech. Trigger Tech is a proud sponsor of the show. We use them here in all of our custom rifles. Uh, they're a very simple trigger as far as one screw design, so they're safe for customers to adjust the pull weight. There's no over travel, sear engagement, all these other things that can get customers in trouble. And they really are a world class system with a roller bearing system that makes it a safe trigger makes it a clean trigger and a fantastic braking trigger. So we love them to pieces here. We put them in all of our guns right right up to the diamond, which is the top of the line. And even in a lot of our hunting guns, we'll use the primary just because it's that good of a trigger just from, I think, three and a half pounds to one and a half pounds. But you set it at two pounds and you swear it's a one and a half pound trigger. It breaks so clean. So thank you, Trigger Tech, for being part of the show. And thank you, MDT. MDT is also a proud sponsor of the show. And they've donated a bunch of stocks here to put on our stock while we have customers scheduled next week to come in and see them. And this is a really great way for you to come and get your hands on all the different makes and models. 
and sort of pick out what stock will be right for you with your custom rifle. So thank you for sponsoring the show here and being part of our show. We really appreciate it. You can go over and see all the really cool stuff that they've got going on. It's mdttac.com. All right, some last things to touch base on here. If you enjoyed the podcast, of course, we love it. If you make some really nice comments on any of the different platforms that you'll find us on, it helps us get found and, and really helps us in the ratings as we keep growing. So we really do appreciate all the listeners. We appreciate all the phone calls and emails. Thank you so much for all of that. We are, again, super excited that our shooting schools for 2022 are posted and live. We only have about 10 to 12 classes that we are going to do next year. So we are limiting them because we are growing as a, as a custom rifle builder and manufacturer. We do limit each class to four students. So we make it about as close to a one-on-one event as you can possibly find. And we hold ourselves to that standard that we want it to be a world-class school where you can come through and just learn as much as you can in the couple of days that you're going to take to be with us. So you can register for those now. They're live on our website. Uh, We are getting a lot of emails and calls about our reloading class. We are working on that as we speak. So Forrester, I'll post some pictures up, just sent us a press, and we paid for it. That's going to be in our reloading class. We have a Dylan 1100 on the way. We have an annealing made perfect machine and all of our different powder tricklers. And we've got a lot of really cool equipment because we do reload a lot. And we use we make all of our ammo for the school. And this is something that customers really now have to do if they're going to get the most out of their rifle because factory ammunition is just unpredictable, unreliable to get. And honestly, an amateur reloader can make way better ammo than that, that of what you can buy. So we are working on equipment. We'll post up some pictures of the new Forster Press that we've been waiting for. We are looking at a start date of sometime in January is when we're going to hold our first class. We're waiting for the last of our equipment to get here before we put the dates up. That way we're not missing something. And we are going to try to make it so we can actually take it to the range and get a chance to shoot some of the ammo. So if you want to sign up for our newsletter, you go to wolfprecision.net. That's our website. You go over to the far right-hand side. And you'll see uh, where you can click on info and then get down there and click on newsletter. If you sign up for that, that's how we'll usually announce the dates are live. The other thing I want to touch base on is, uh, yes, we are building custom rifles. And we're very proud of the fact that we're the first people in the industry to ever really hyper-focus on trying to make that connection between the chamber and the barrel correct and dealing with issues with the crooked throat and how that has to do with robbing accuracy of the gun and just creating a really unpredictable, unreliable way of making a rifle. And and so we've been very blessed to work with some of the brightest people in the industry. Um, We've been very blessed to have fantastic people working with us, not to win one, but actually two patents awarded for our advancements in the rifles. And then we just hold ourselves to that standard. If you're looking for just a super rifle, if you're looking for that rifle, and if you're looking for something that has just the the most advanced cutting-edge technology that a modern rifle can be built with, I mean, something that's like no other rifle in the world, then we're your people. We would love to talk to you about the Ace and build you a fine custom rifle. Uh, You can always reach us by reaching out at contact at wolfprecision.net, or you can always call us here at the shop anytime. I always, always, always take time to go over the builds personally with all the customers on the phone uh, to make sure that we go over all the details properly and what they're looking for. So really excited about that. And the last thing I want to touch base on I think is really important is, again, we are giving away a slot for our long-range shooting school to a veteran. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world a customer called said I'd like to pay for the slot anonymously uh, for the school to give away to a veteran. So announce it on your podcast, put it up on your Facebook. And he was just a super awesome guy in doing this. And I thought, wow, you know, A, that he selected us for the slot and to give it out and to give back. But but B, I'm really looking forward to having you come through. So if you're a veteran, go over to our Facebook page. It's Wolf Precision, and you can see where you can register. So you're going to like us. You're going to follow us and tag three people. And you do all of that. You're in the running. And at the end of the month, we'll announce the winner. So you've got a very short period of time to get registered to win. Uh, we are certainly looking forward to giving the slot away. And uh, we'll announce that on Facebook as well and in a newsletter. So go ahead and register for that. Looking forward to having this school. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. The next podcast, we're going to continue on this series. And we're going to talk about the third pillar. And that is firing the perfect shot. So looking forward to seeing you all then. Until then, my name is Jamie Dotson. I'm your host, and you're listening to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. Uh, uh, uh.